This video was made possible by Skillshare, home to over 16,000 classes that could teach you a new life skill. The first 500 people to sign up using the link in the description will get a two-month free trial. You're probably wondering why you're seeing me outside versus an animated cow. To most modern Americans, the great outdoors is seen less as a way of life and more of a novelty reserved for vacations or hiking trips. Most of us in the West live a box lifestyle. We wake up in an air-conditioned box, hop in a smaller air-conditioned box, then sit in a box surrounded by other boxes in an even larger box. On any given workday, we might spend less than half an hour outside. This is obviously in stark contrast to how humans have lived for tens of thousands of years. Since the agricultural revolution, and to a lesser extent since the advent of widespread farming, our diet and habits have changed drastically. Our technological progress has outpaced evolution among our species, and that's come with a whole assortment of health problems. Take America, for example. Nearly 10% of Americans have some form of diabetes, double the rate of just 20 years ago. 36.5% of American adults, over one-third of every adult in the country, are obese. 40 million adults suffer from depression. Over 610,000 Americans die of heart disease every year. That's one in every four deaths. Of course, these problems don't just come from the fact that we don't go outside enough. This overall decline in health has been caused by three overarching lifestyle changes away from our hunter-gatherer roots. Diet, habitat, and movement. Our ancestors were nomadic and traveled all across Africa's Great Rift Valley in search of plentiful food sources and new places to live. The lowlands of Africa were early man's habitat, and while they traveled large distances for food or shelter, they never really experienced any extreme changes in their overall habitat. The past 200 years, humanity's technological progress has allowed us to change all that. On September 5, 1862, two British men made history by breaking the previous altitude record for a hot air balloon flight. Over the course of the next hour, James Glacier and Henry Coxwell ascended to somewhere between 35 and 39,000 feet. The exact measurement is unknown because Glacier stopped taking readings when his vision failed, shortly before he passed out from lack of oxygen. These two men had entered an environment which no human in history had ever experienced, the planet's upper atmosphere. 39,000 feet is over 7 miles in the air. That's higher than Mount Everest and higher even than the typical cruising altitude of 747s. It was an environment completely inhospitable to human life, somewhere, biologically speaking, our species was never meant to go. The Industrial Revolution was the catalyst for an entirely new trajectory of human experience. Hot air balloons, airships, and planes opened up the skies. Diving bells, suits, and submarines allowed us to explore the depths of the world's oceans. Oxygen tanks allowed climbers to reach the highest mountain peaks. And finally, rocket technology allowed us to leave the Earth entirely and enter the void of outer space. The Industrial Revolution and the breakthroughs that followed allowed humans to experience extreme new environments, and many explorers died as a result. This showed us not only the limits of human biology, but also helped us understand what features make a habitat habitable. While we humans are very good at preventing death even in extreme environments, if we wanted to design a hospitable habitat from scratch, we would need to keep in mind three key points based on our evolution. First, humans evolved with a certain habitat feature remaining constant all the time at the same level, gravity. Our bodies are heavily dependent on the forces of gravity, which is why astronauts typically don't stay in space for very long. Second, our species evolved with a more or less constant cyclical habitat feature, the day-night cycle. The day-night cycle breaks up the human lifetime with reasonable periods of activity and rest, which is why we begin to feel sick or uncomfortable if we mess with our sleep schedule too much. The advent of the light bulb and the option of staying awake long after the sun had gone down was a huge lifestyle change that happened not too long ago in the timeline of human evolution. Finally, our species evolved with a handful of habitat features that varied within a reasonable range. Temperature, migration, and weather. When we stay cooped up inside all day watching TV or browsing Reddit, we tend to feel physically uncomfortable or depressed. This has become easier and easier with the advent of working or attending classes from home. So, in a nutshell, humans suffer in an environment that differs considerably from their ancestral habitat. Food is another big contributor to the overall decline in Western health. Despite the fact that we have health professionals and self-proclaimed nutritionists running around telling us what's healthy and what's not, there's still an obesity epidemic, high rates of diabetes and heart disease, and a prevalence of preventable nutritional deficit disorders. Why is that? Of course, part of it can be chalked up to lack of willpower. No amount of good dietary information is going to prevent you from eating that third brownie if you really want to. 
Another aspect of the problem is that we're surrounded by options our ancestors didn't have. Foods that have only been around for a few decades, if that. Consider the case of one of our primate cousins, Mokolo the gorilla. Mokolo lives at the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo, and his condition baffled zookeepers and doctors for quite some time. In 2005, when a 21-year-old gorilla in Mokolo's group died, the staff began to work on ways to improve the remaining gorilla's health. Mokolo was overweight, had high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, and high triglycerides. He was 22 at the time, which roughly equates to an American male in his 50s, who often suffer similar conditions. It was bizarre because Mokolo obviously didn't smoke, drink, or eat fast food five times a week. On the contrary, his diet was carefully crafted by health experts. The zookeepers compared Mokolo and his group to wild gorillas to try to determine just what was causing such health issues. In the end, they changed the gorilla's diet from nutrient-rich gorilla biscuits to foods more similar to what gorillas eat in the wild. They bought diverse vegetables from the local supermarket, and within a week, Mokolo's bad habits of laziness, regurgitation, pulling out his hair, it had all improved or vanished entirely. The gorillas were also less bored. It took them much longer to eat all the vegetables than it did their gorilla biscuits. Despite eating twice the amount of calories as their previous diet, over the next few months Mokolo lost 70 pounds and stabilized around a healthy weight. The same general rule applies to just about every species. We thrive when we mimic our ancestral biological diet. That's not to say that modern nutritional knowledge is wrong, just that some of it doesn't reflect a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. The biggest culprits are industrial foods, sugars, and seeds. As a rule of thumb, if it's made in a factory, contains lots of ingredients you can't pronounce, or doesn't spoil, you probably shouldn't eat it, or drink it in the case of sugary beverages like soda. A study on the diets of 229 foraging societies determined that nearly 75% of them obtained more than half of their calories from animal meat. Of course, this isn't your average American franken-cow, but natural, non-medicated animals. In another study of the few remaining modern hunter-gatherer tribes, food groups were carefully weighed and measured. Seven of the nine groups obtained over 50% of their dietary calories from meat and insects. For plants, starchy roots and tubers were most prevalent, accounting for about 15% of calories, and less than 10% from fruits in all but three of the tribes. These modern-day hunter-gatherers get most of their calories from meat, but eat more plants overall because of their relatively low calorie content. Without exception, these tribes have much lower rates of heart disease and related afflictions, and obesity and diabetes are essentially non-existent. Then there's movement. Today's Western society is largely sedentary, which is obviously in stark contrast to the lifestyle our ancestors lived. Thanks to the agricultural revolution and eventually the industrial revolution, we didn't have to chase down our food anymore. We could grow it or produce it from strange sounding ingredients in a factory. But before all that took place, early humans would move around a lot. The hunters would cover large distances to find food, then they'd have to carry their kills back to camp. Gatherers would forage for berries, collect wood for fires, and often they would tend to the children. There was very little sitting around in this primitive society. By comparison, we do a whole lot of sitting today. We sit in our cars on the way to work, sit at our desk until quitting time, sit in the car again, sit in front of the TV for an hour or so, and then go to sleep and do it all over again. Many modern fitness experts will tell you that you need to go to a gym four days a week to be healthy. But just look back to our ancestors. They didn't have a bench press, but they were all functionally strong people. Think back to the last time you did yard work, or helped a friend move, or just walked around a park. You felt better after, right? Maybe physically tired, but your mental state was improved. Humans are wired for physical activity. In the past, we had to stay active to survive, and our brains rewarded us for it. Just like our habitat and our diet, humans thrive when we mimic our ancestors' lifestyle. All of our modern technology has given a lot of people a greater quality of life in terms of financial success and overall comfort. But there's no denying our modern lifestyle has also been a detriment to our health. The rate at which we're advancing and outpacing evolution's ability to keep up has been a giant leap for mankind, but a step backwards for man. It's no wonder so many of us are overweight or depressed when we tend to live like captive gorillas. So while yes, we should enjoy all of our modern conveniences, always remember that we're driven by evolution and biology, and that maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to go for a walk outside. The most common questions I get asked regarding my videos are, what software do you use and where did you learn to edit? Believe it or not, I went to school for broadcast journalism and minored in film production. I learned a lot about After Effects there, but coming back to live on-camera work for this video made me realize just how out of practice I am. 
Luckily for me, I can brush up on my camera skills with Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators, featuring over 16,000 classes in video production and editing, graphic design, photography, and more. Anyone can take a class, try a project, or even teach a class themselves. Premium membership begins around $10 a month for unlimited access to everything. As a little thank you for watching my videos, Skillshare is offering a two-month free trial for the first 500 people who sign up using the link below. You can use those two months to learn an awesome new skill that you can use to market yourself, create a business, or even start your own YouTube channel like I did. There's no better time than now to take that first step towards learning that skill you've always dreamed of having, and since it's completely free to try, you have nothing to lose. Be one of the first 500 to sign up using the link in the description and start your two-month free trial with Skillshare. I decided to try a new format for this video, so make sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to support Second Thought and stay up to date with the latest content. You can watch the rest of my videos by clicking here, or if you're in the mood for something a little different, come check out my new gaming channel by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.